It's been a, a really a, a very um, major year for us on a number of accounts. You know, uh, certainly first up, uh, we've changed the name of the company from African Mining and Exploration to Savannah Resources, and I think that really um, was there uh, mainly to uh, to un underscore uh, the sort of changes uh, that we're under we've been undertaking with the, with with the company. There's clearly been a, a, a change in leadership um, in the company as well. I've come on board as as CEO um, around about sort of three months or so ago. Uh, Mark has gone over to our sister company, um, Electo, brought in uh, some further um, executive uh, staff as well. And apart from that, we've also uh, sold our gold projects in Mali uh, to Electo uh, and have uh, established a, a very uh, significant uh, position on the Electo uh, register as a result. And finally, um, we've made the first of our new investment initiatives uh, by acquiring an 80% interest in Matilda Minerals, uh, which owns a um, quite a significant uh, heavy mineral sand uh, project in uh, Mozambique. So there's just a little map that sort of uh, describes uh, the present range of acti activities of the company um, at the moment. And I think, um, whilst it's illustrative, I think the, the main point I'd like to sort of uh, make is that what we've really deliberately tried to do is um, expand the, uh, both the, the project focus and the commodity focus of uh, the company away from being uh, strictly gold and strictly associated with, uh, with Mali. And this is really sort of part of a sort of a wider strategy, I think, to uh, both uh, de-risk uh, the company but also open us up to sort of further opportunities. And I think there's a huge amount of optionality uh, built into uh, the way the company is actually structured at the moment. Um, optionality in the sense that uh, optionality around different uh, geographies, both uh, Mali and Ethiopia, and then uh, more recently with our investment in, uh, in Mozambique. Uh, we've also uh, widened uh, the commodity suite um, from uh, strictly gold into both gold, uh, gold copper uh, in Mauritania through our investment in Electo, and, um, and most importantly, as a result of um, our taking an, uh, a major position in the uh, Mozambican uh, mineral, sands, uh, mineral sands industry. Um, just, uh, just by way of a little bit of background, and um, I am a little bit reluctant to sort of talk about this, but um, I've been sort of forced into at least um, introducing the company by introducing myself, and I have been around for, um, I um, uh, regret to say, for some time in the resources industry, around about sort of 30 years. Uh, fortunately, that's been associated with some amount of success, and uh, I've been uh, behind the establishment of uh, two major uh, listed companies in Australia. Uh, both of which sort of started off in very sort of similar ways to uh, Savannah. That is, uh, a small capitalisation companies like uh, like Savannah. Uh, the first one was in 1987, just before the uh, the market crash. And funnily enough, I actually I think provided a, a terrific uh, opportunity for us to sort of build a build a major company. Immediately after the crash, um, there was sort of a, a, a large number of opportunities for us to invest in. And I feel that. that the, the current market context is somewhat similar. It's a, it's a, a rather bombed out, bombed out junior resources market. There's some interesting opportunities uh, floating around at the moment. Um, both of these also, um, in both of these companies, employed the similar sort of business strategy. That is a diversified mineral strategy, a diversified project strategy. And really what I've tried to do with these companies, and demonstrably successfully, um, was use one project to, if you like, support uh, support the other. And as a result of that, um, and the application of a little bit of time and judicious hard work, I'm, I'm, I'm quick to add, um, sort of ba basically uh, developed both companies into multi-hundred million dollar uh, resources groups. Savage uh, was one of the, the major mid-tier uh, companies in the Australian Stock Exchange in the mid-1990s, and more recently, Hillgrove Resources had a really very successful track record. Took that company out of liquidation, recapitalised it, introduced it to um, a series of projects, and uh, took it to having a market capitalisation of about $200 million by the time I left. And, uh, and very unusually, um, in, the, uh, in the resources uh, context, it actually was a dividend payer as well. So um, I was sort of pretty pleased about the, uh, the result there. 
in terms of in terms of um, our non uh, in terms of our board, I'm very well supported, both uh, with uh, a, a good team of non-executive directors, um, all of whom uh, are exclusively equity motivated in terms of in terms of payment. None of them receive directors' fees, um, so their interests are absolutely and exclusively aligned with those of shareholders. The only way they make money is is if you, as shareholders, make money. Um, also supported by an excellent uh, technical director, Dale Ferguson, who um, I've worked with uh, for a number of years, and a really terrific geologist, very able um, gentleman, and um, he's joined the team. He's Perth-based, and um, he's certainly leading the charge uh, with us on the, on the technical side of things. Um, Michael McGarty, our CFO, is actually in the audience, so we, uh, he's raising his hand there. Um, he's a very capable individual and we've certainly been sort of stretching um, him uh, dramatically over the last few months with uh, you know, sort of series of deals, capital raisings and sort of restructuring and he's been handling himself uh, marvellously to, uh, to the task. Just looking at um, some of the key data, um, actually as of today I think we've got a market capitalisation of around about 5 million, we've got 138 million shares on issue. do have a few warrants and options but I'm very quick to say that most of those have an average ex exercise price um, um, well in excess of the uh, current day mar uh, share price of around about uh, just over four, 4 pence per share. Um, one of the, the major things we've looked at doing is um, really uh, solidifying the, the quality of the balance sheet. Um, <coughs> obviously that's uh, been achieved as a result of uh, a couple of uh, uh, capital raisings, both uh, from myself, I subscribed for ha uh, half a million pounds worth of new shares in the company, and more recently uh, we undertook a half a million pound uh, uh, capital raising, uh, which was um, very ably led uh, by our nomad and broker M plus one uh, singer. So we have a cash balance of just under uh, a million pounds at the moment. And uh, complementing that is of course our strategic shareholding in uh, Electo Minerals. Um, we have around about a 25% shareholding in the company. As of today it's worth around about $3 million. So if you look at sort of current assets, we've got around about sort of $4 million uh, pounds worth of current assets. So we've materially uh, strengthened the balance sheet. Um, over the period of about four months. Um, we've got a pretty good register um, outside of myself um, with my position, which as I mentioned uh, come, came as a result of my um, subscribing for shares. We've got Praetorian Resources, um, which is uh, run by Charlie Cannon Brooks, a long-term long shareholder in the company. Uh, Fisk, and there's some people from Fisk here today, um, has been a long-term supporter of the company and recently stepped up in the, uh, the recent uh, placement as well, as did City Financial. Uh, which uh, is a new shareholder, SVS is a new shareholder, CQS is a, um, a shareholder from the original flow to the company and a, a couple of our uh, vendor, uh, new vendor shareholders from the Mozambican uh, project. So just in summary we've got 152 million shares um, in, in, uh, in Electo, we're the uh, first largest uh, shareholder and uh, and uh, we enthusiastically support uh, the efforts of Mark in terms of taking that company forward from here. Um, our major uh, major project uh, outside of our investment um, is uh, the Jangamo uh, Mineral Sands project in, in Mozambique. Um, mineral sands are, you know, comprise the Ilmenite, Rutile and, uh, and Zircon. They're sort of pretty sort of fundamental, basic, uh, if you like, in, in industrial metals. Uh, which are used uh, particularly uh, for in ceramics in the case of zircon and uh, for the production of pigments uh, for uh, paints, inks, uh, automotive paints, uh, paper and, and those sorts of products. So it's sort of a very sort of fundamental um, industrial commodity. Um, in terms of um, recent uh, market price moves, um, it has been a time of cyclical downturn in uh, heavy minerals prices. This is something that's been experienced uh, routinely um, over the decades since really the 1960s. I think it's a, an excellent time to actually be taking a solid position in a new uh, mineral sands project um, at the moment. So. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the project in a moment, but what we do actually have is uh, great optionality on the improvement um, in, in mineral sands pr uh, prices, which are sort of est uh, which uh, are thought will is thought to occur over the next uh, next couple of years, uh, particularly as the Chinese economy moves from being a um, infrastructure and investment 
um, influenced economy to more of a, a consumer driven uh, economy that will be using paints and um, various sort of consumer products uh, which heavily use uh, heavily use pigments. So I think it's the right investment environment for us to be taking a position in mineral sands at the moment. Um, just by way of background, um, we acquired 80% of Matilda Minerals. The other 20% is actually owned by a, an Irish national who's been living in um, Maputo, uh, which is the capital of Mozambique, for about six, uh, six or seven years. Originally uh, worked with the Irish embassy in Maputo. Um, he's a fluent speaker of um, Portuguese, and importantly, he's not uh, a Mozambican general, I'm pleased to say. So, uh, and is actually leading the charge on the ground as our, uh, as our country manager and doing a very, very able uh, job indeed. Um, I think we uh, have bought the, the property for a, a relatively modest consideration, 125,000 Aussie dollars in, in cash and 400,000 um, Australian dollars worth of shares in, in, um, in, in Savannah itself. And there's some milestone payments there as well uh, coming up. And it's our obligation to sort of fund the project all the way through to the commencement of um, a, feasi a feasibility study. Um, just by way of background, Mozambique is really one of the sort of the prime um, investment destinations if you're after um, heavy mineral sands. Um, it's got a 2,700 kilometre long uh, uh, coastline, um, very attractive coastline. But apart from the uh, apart from the um, the, um, the 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 uh, the visual appeal of it all, um, it's actually one of the richest uh, mineral sands uh, countries in the world, and really reminds me, I suppose, of Australia as it was in the in the uh, 1960s, in uh, the sort of very early stages of the growth um, of the Australian mineral sands industry. So um, I think there's still a lot of opportunity. I think there's still a lot of uh, material to be found, and I think uh, we've got an excellent position with our Jangamo project. Um, sorry, down here in um, down here in the southern part of um, of Mozambique. Um, just in terms of uh, the setting, uh, you've got uh, Kenmare up in this part of the world. Uh, they're now in production, so there's proof of concept of being able to successfully develop, um, you know, materially large uh, deposits into into uh, operations within the country. Um, the ge geology along the coast is generally uh, well understood, although it's still relatively lightly um, explored. And some of these sequences uh, run uh, very deep, as I'll show you in a moment. Um, importantly, uh, particularly where we are, there's um, actually very good infrastructure, and this is not target country in, by any sense um, of the word, and we sort of enjoy uh, both good access uh, with roads and, uh, and, and ports. And demonstrably, um, it's a pro-mining government. Um, there's a lot of money uh, that's going to be thrown at uh, Mozambique in, uh, in coming years. Uh, it's got iron ore, it's got coal, it's got heavy mineral sands, and uh, this is really going to be you know, one of the, one of the um, you know, growth economies in, uh, in southern Africa. Z uh, zeroing in, sorry, on, um, on our own, uh, own area, um, it's this 180 square kilometre area here, um, which sits on the western side um, of two major uh, licences owned by Rio Tinto. This is actually an area that was relinquished very reluctantly, I might add, uh, by Rio uh, a couple of years ago, and our partner was uh, fortunate enough to be able to pick it up. There's a major series of um, strand lines that run down, uh, run down the coastline here. Um, importantly, uh, Rio has actually, and rather unusually, uh, announced an exploration target of uh, between 7 and 12 uh, billion tonnes of heavy mineral sands at uh, this uh, project, uh, Matam the Matamba project, um, together with another uh, resource, resource nearby. So it's unusual for Rio to do it. They only generally do this when uh, they have what's described as this tier one project. So this is a, a world class deposit they're sort of talking about here. And um, part of our area, we believe, sort of runs through part of what is effectively uh, the Matamba, uh, Matamba deposit. Um, the, uh, the, the Rio ground uh, sort of shows uh, that the mineralisation grades between about 3 and 4.5%, four and which is rather good, and has a low, low level of slimes. Um, the uh, heavy minerals in Mozambique are characterised by um, high levels of um, ilmenite uh, rather than uh, rutile, but it's ilmenite rich and, um, and zircon rich. Um, um, 
in terms of where we're at at the moment, uh, we actually acquired the project on the 6th of October, and I think as a demonstration of our um, execution abilities, um, we were sort of fortunate enough uh, to be able to uh, put in place an exploration program um, of uh, 2,000 metres of drilling, uh, which we concluded in November. Um, so literally about a month and a half after we purchased the project, we'd completed 2,000 metres of uh, drilling with about sort of 28, uh, 28 holes. Um, a lot of those holes were sort of concentrated in this area here, so uh, sort of we're hopeful that we'll be able to um, outline some uh, pretty sort of solid uh, drill intersections uh, when we release our assay results, um, hopefully in um, the early part of uh, February of, uh, of next year, and a number of scout holes out here in the western part of the, uh, western part of the tenement. Um, basically every hole that was drilled um, sh showed evidence of, uh, of heavy minerals and some of the pan concentrates uh, looks like they got up to grades of um, at least uh, 5%. So visually it looks very, very promising in terms of the results. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the material has actually been set, sent to TET. Uh, the samples are being prepared at the moment by uh, our laboratory, uh, Bureau Veritas and those samples will then be sent to Australia for assay and mineralogical analysis. So, um, so the plan uh, post uh, the announcement of the assay results next year will be sort of clearly to evaluate the results, but we're sort of hopeful that uh, they'll provide the, the justification for a second round of drilling uh, to be undertaken in probably the second uh, calendar quarter of next year, probably something of the order of about 5,000 metres of drilling. Um, in marked contrast to gold drilling, um, it's been refreshing to do some drilling in uh, heavy mineral sands. Uh, it's a much cheaper exercise. You're drilling for uh, really generally down to sort of depths of 50 to 60 metres. You know, you're not talking about diamond drilling, you're not talking about 300 metres of uh, drilling, and you're not necessarily talking about terribly close space drilling. So you get really very good bang for your buck in terms of drilling of uh, these types of uh, deposits. In our case, it's cost us around about 250,000 pounds. So um, I'm really pleased with both the results and uh, how the, uh, the team applied themselves uh, to, the, uh, to the task. Um, just uh, just uh, repeating uh, the point just around existing infrastructure and services, um, you can see the, the main national highway that actually runs through the centre of the tenement here. There's a disu disused railway line that runs up to uh, the port of Inambalm just up here and that would actually make an ideal uh, export port for the export of um, heavy mineral concentrates. Um, it's quite uh, sort of weatherproof as a port. Um, it's really relatively shallow draft and probably needs some, uh, some dredging. There's an existing long jetty there and it's sort of really ideally sort of situated to act as a relatively uh, <coughs> low cost uh, piece of infrastructure to um, allow us to actually develop uh, whatever it is uh, we find down here um, at um, at uh, our Jangamo project, I don't think we uh, don't think we um, actually have a world class deposit there. But I think what we do have, uh, and I'm pretty confident we have, is we at least have part of uh, a world class deposit. And I think that's a, a pretty good start for a little company with a market capitalisation of uh, five million pounds. So uh, we're certainly hunting in the right territory. And my experience always has been, you know, it's always good to go into areas that um, are good neighbourhoods that um, you know, demonstrably. Uh, contain uh, resources of, you know, of, of significant size. I've done very well out of uh, proving up resources like this in this sort of context. I've done it before in uh, early stage investment in, uh, in coal seam gas, uh, for example, and I think this particular project has those sorts of hallmarks for sort of major uh, value accretion. In terms of uh, accreting value in this particular project, um, our uh, primary uh, objective uh, for calendar 2014 is to come up with the Jork resource in, in uh, the second half of uh, next year. Uh, and I think that's sort of a, a reasonably achievable, uh, achievable objective. So it's a great uh, maiden uh, new project uh, to, to add to um, our asset uh, portfolio. I might just sort of quickly sort of talk about uh, gold in West Africa. Um, uh, Mark uh, is here as well and he'd probably be able to sort of talk about it much more authoritatively than me so um, I'll dob you in and say that um, after this um, everyone should feel free I think uh, to come and, uh, ha and ask, uh, ask uh, Mark. Stay for the wine. Uh, stay for the wine and I can promise a bit of wine with it as well. 
But I, th I think that I think the main point I just might, might just sort of really hit the highlights in terms of you know my sort of broad sort of thoughts about it. The way that Electo is n now uh, currently uh, conceived is that um, it has uh, sort of major positions in I think some of the best geographies and and the best geologies in the northern part of sort of sub-Saharan um, Africa, both in in Mali and and Ethiopia. Um, Mali has uh, you know uh, has uh, uh, an excellent history of uh, gold mining and gold production, um, and um, I think it's one of the sort of primary uh, prime destinations for the discovery of uh, multi million ounce multi ounce ore bodies. So it's a great place to be. There's there's just no no doubt about that, and there's some um, impress impressive resources and impressive names uh, that have met with uh, considerable success operating in this part of the world. And the geology is right with the um, operating in this uh, greenstone belt. This just gives you a little bit of uh, an inkling as to the, the overall sort of setting, and um, it's a um, it's a target rich environment. And uh, I think Electo's uh, uh, Casanto project uh, I think holds a lot of promise. Apart from the Ethiopian projects, uh, which sort of total around about uh, three thousand square kilometres in area. I've had a look at some of the uh, the work that uh, Electo has done, uh, particularly on the um, on the Western license, the Metacal uh, license, uh, which is which is quite large. I think about two thousand square kilometres in area, and really there's some outstanding uh, geochemical anomalies with um, some really good uh, soil geochemical uh, soil geochemical uh, numbers and stream sediment num numbers. You know, there's some very very large uh, anomalous uh, zones there. And I think that's uh, that's been um, underscored by the recent interest in uh, these projects uh, that's been shown by Centerman. Uh, there's recently been announced a $14 million joint venture, uh, whereby Centerman's uh, farming in uh, to earn up to a 70% interest in these projects by spending $14 million. Uh, more importantly, uh, they com they've committed to spending about $4 million over the next couple of years, and I think the thought is they might actually spend that a little bit more quickly. Uh, so there's some serious money and some serious firepower that's going to be uh, thrown at these projects over the, over the next um, over the next little while. Casanto, I think this has got all of the uh, right hallmarks as well for a major discovery. Uh, clearly, it's a, 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 a well mil well mineralised um, area. Uh, Mark's work um, over the last couple of years has already outlined a 107,000 ounce. Um, uh, resource there. And that's only drilling part of uh, part of this uh, line of strike of mineralisation, and the mineralisation uh, remains open along strike to the sort of northwest and south uh, southeast, and and certainly down, down dip. It's only been uh, drilled down to about sixty to seventy metres. So, I think we can reasonably expect uh, to see a material increase in that resource over the uh, over the next little while on the back of uh, drilling that I think is presently being undertaken. Uh, by uh, Electo at the uh, at the moment. Um, just just back to that area as well. Um, there have been some recent artisanal uh, gold rushes in the area on the western part of the Casanto uh, uh, tenement, and um, it looks looks pretty exciting what they've actually outlined there. Uh, Electo's been doing uh, some rock chipping and channel sampling there, and. Um, um, I think uh, the thought is that that should come up with some pretty impressive numbers. In fact, there were some numbers um, announced uh, announced today. So, I think this will provide an excellent uh, new stream in parallel to the stuff that we'll be uh, doing uh, with our mineral sands project in um, in, in in Mozambique. Um, that's just a little bit more um, on those things. I think um, I think the major point is that uh, we're very sort of keen on being able to deliver um, a solid sort of new stream. Um, I think. Having a sort of multi-project approach uh, will make that a whole lot easier. I think it will be a news-rich environment for us, and um, we'll be able to sort of run a series of sort of parallel sort of news streams uh, during the course of uh, during the course of 2014. So we're clearly focusing in on uh, Jangamo and um, our assay results, and um, hopefully some uh, resource numbers in the latter part of in the latter part of the year. Um, just one thing I would say is that. Uh, this is a work in progress, um, and um, I think I personally would like to add to uh, our portfolio of projects. Gold is clearly uh, one of the, the key commodities that we'll be sort of following up on. 
Uh, I personally like copper, and I think gold and copper are two of the best commodities. Gold is the best of the precious metals, and copper is the best of the um, industrial minerals uh, of the industrial metals. I've had a sort of long and uh, uh, successful history of um, bringing forward uh, copper gold opportunities, both large scale mines, medium scale mines, and uh, and smaller copper developments. So that's sort of clearly on our radar uh, to secure. Um, a copper project for our portfolio. Um, just sort of um, perhaps just uh, recapping on some of the incentive arrangements, this really just sort of um, underscores uh, what, uh, what we've been sort of talking about. I'm exclusively um, equity motivated and incentivised, they're the ones that, uh, that I bought. There are no bonuses, no pensions, no benefits in kind. Uh, what you see is what you get. I don't get uh, anything, and I, I will be talking to our CFO about the, the one pound payment after this as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that largely is sort of the story about the uh, the company. Um, it's been a busy six months. Uh, it is a work in progress. We are continuing to, to shape uh, the, uh, the, the company. I hope that we'll be able to introduce some further projects. You've got a, uh, or uh, our shareholders have got a very committed uh, management group. We've got a very supportive uh, non-executive uh, board. Um, I think we've got a terrific investment in Electo, and uh, we've got a position in a world-class mining uh, or mineral province in um, in Mozambique, and uh, we have ha have ambitions to uh, really uh, deliver over the coming years. And I'm looking forward to the uh, task. So, thanks, and um, that's it. <laughs>